anger, rage, hatred. So I need to be healed by the grace of God's Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ. So anything that will trigger me and make me hate, I try to avoid. So these blasphemous dogs, because they're wicked and filthy and they're liars, I avoid them until or unless I have to deal with them. So this is why I'm glad you addressed or watched it because we're going to play play the clips live and I'll be hearing it for the first time because I trust and you trust the Holy Spirit to enable us to destroy these blasphemies and glorify Christ. So that's why amen. I watched it. Amen. 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 Everyone in the live stream, welcome. Welcome to my channel once more. More posts. Yes. Please like and share the video. Bring more and more people over here because what, hap what is happening right now is that Ibn Farooq, Uthman Ibn Fibn Farooq, is giving Dawa training classes. So he has, uh, I think, five or six classes already done. I don't know what happened and why I picked up Dawa training day two. I don't know why I picked up Dawa training too, but like made, it is the Lord who wanted me to watch it. And in this Dawa training session two, what he has done is, is all critique of the Bible. Like 90% of his session is critique on the Bible. Even though that in the beginning, he's saying, I am giving Dawa and not doing debate. But in the end, if you watch it, you'll see it's all about critique of the Bible and showing to the world that there is one Quran, but there are so many Bibles. So we're going to go into okay. the detail. He did that again. He said there's one Quran again. Exactly. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're going to go into that first. We will listen and hear it from the horse's own mouth before you refute him. And I know you can refute him very easily, uh, and we'll do that. So love for Muslim said... the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. We trust in our Amen. Lord. I can't move out the Holy Spirit, so we trust in him. Go ahead. Absolutely. And love for our Muslim said, uh, Lord Jesus, bless both of you. Love you, Lalaji. Thank you so very much. And Sam, you have your lover over here. Who's that? A good brother. Love for Muslims. A good brother. Rob oh, Christian yeah, yeah. is here oh, as thought, well. Oh, I thought you said my lover. I thought, who? Someone wants to marry me? Tatiana? Where is she? Come on, man. Not that kind of a lover, you know. They're yeah, brotherly just, love, you know. Brad. Don't get me excited. She doesn't want to marry me. Stop it. Hmm. That's a good thing for her, but we'll see it man. later. <laughs> Why like this? Rob Christian, welcome to the stream, brother. God bless you. Yes. And uh, let's go. And let's start. All right. In Jesus' name, let's start. And let's listen from the horse's own mouth. <laughs> what he says about his courses first before we go into the subject watch ready for this kind of thing don't do it right i'm introducing these things to you not so that you can go buy the exact same books and tomorrow go out and start debating with people no everybody needs to realize their place right? you're a guy give down very few people in the world let alone I mean, in America, are at a level where they should be engaging in that type of debate. Because if you're not ready for it, you will be on the truth and you will make the falsehood win. Okay? The debates we have here are nothing compared to the debates we have in the Muslim country. If you ever seen the Manadras and in the Muslim countries, whew, they get wild, right? Between different you know, groups and things. And sometimes you watch one and you know the person's on the truth, but he loses. Why? Because he's not able to articulate that message correctly. And there is, there is ways to win debates. There's techniques. And somebody on wrong side of it may be a good debater. Right? I'm going to teach you a few tricks on how to win debates. All right. So I played this part explicitly because okay. the first eight minutes he is saying, which I'm not going to play. You can watch it yourself, everyone. Yeah. He is saying, give dawa, give dawa, give dawa. And suddenly, from this mark on, he is moving everything to the debate. And he himself said it while uh, David Wood was there that I am not a debater, I am a da'i. Yeah. Right? And then what happens is, he, he sends a low ball. Right over here at 11 minute mark approximately, he sends out a low ball against all of those people. Check this out. I am nobody, I'm just one guy amongst all the Muslims. You can destroy me, you can kill me, you can imprison me, you can discredit me. Dawa won't stop. This is the deen of Allah. It will reach every household. You guys are wasting time. Okay? 
We as Muslims, we debate when we need to. We don't go out to debate. And that's very important. We debate when we need to remove the harm. When there is a blockage, we remove that blockage. But we go out to give da'wah. And that's a very important point for all of you that are going to be, inshallah, and already are du'at. When you go out, don't go out with the mindset that I want to debate. Be ready for it. But don't go out with that mindset. Just give you an example, right? We don't go out to fight. But, I mean, I know how to fight. <laughs> if I need to, I'll defend myself. But that's not what I go for. Right? I know how to debate. If I need to, I will. But that's not what I go out for. You go out wanting good for people. Wanting good. You know, these people that come to debate with us, watch the debates from David, Sam, whatever, Crook, Shook. Sam, when did you debate him? Uh, I did, but brother, can you do me a favor? Why would you torture me to hear this guy give a spiel? Why can't we go just to the arguments? Because okay, we know he's we'll go to the right. argument. I wanted to show Let that how one. he is yeah. moving to the audience, how he moved his Dawa training class. If you look at it, thank you, yes. Perry, for your super chat. If you look at it, it is Dawa training session day two. Okay. Yes. He is giving how to give Dawa. But then after the first eight minutes, it, the whole passage till the 12, 13 minutes, it's all about yes. not giving Dawa, but how Can to I explain why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I explain why? Yes. Okay. This is why I'm going to try to be fair. And I don't want to be fair with this guy. So you put me in a position where I have to be fair uh, with this guy. I don't want to be dishonest, but I don't want to be fair. I just want to destroy his arguments. Okay. His point is simple. You go do Dawah, but be, pre be prepared to debate if you have to, and be prepared then to refute their arguments and show why their religion is false. So this is why he's giving them arguments in case a David Wood or a Sam Shimon shows up, you can then show them why their religion is false. The Bible is false, even though your intention is talk about Islam. But if you have a Christian who's coming and he's bringing objections, try to answer and then turn it against him. This is his point. So let's not make it more than it is that he's doing Dawah and yet he's turning it into debate. The purpose of what he's doing here is to show do Dawah, but get ready to debate if you have to and be prepared to then destroy their argument or their religion. So can we get to his arguments and not waste time on these things? Because these are irrelevant right now. What do you think? Yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, as we'll go to 20 minutes mark. Yeah, go to his arguments because I understand his strategy. Even though he can neither fight nor debate, He's just a barking dog like his prophet, but I understand his mindset. Let me repeat what his mindset is as you get there. He's saying, you go and present Islam, but be ready to debate if you have to, because there'll be people who come who are going to challenge you. Get ready to answer, then turn the arguments against them. So this is similar to what I do, what you do. I don't want to attack Islam unless I have to. I want to glorify Jesus because Jesus says in John 12, 32, I, when I am lifted up, will draw all men to myself. Jesus didn't say by me destroying Islam, people will get saved. In fact, when you do destroy Islam, it results in Muslims becoming agnostic and atheist. People don't get saved from destroying another religion or another worldview. They get saved by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. So our duty is to preach the gospel, to glorify Christ and exalt him because it's when you present Christ and his beauty and majesty and lift it up, the spirit will use that to convict people to turn to Christ. Destroying another position only makes a person lose faith in that position, but it doesn't make them a Christian. Aren't you dealing with former Muslims who left Islam, but they're not Christian? Correct, brother. I am. So this is what he's doing. He's doing what Christians are supposed to do. He's taking the Christian mindset, the Christian strategy, the Christian approach, and he's Islamicizing it. Because that's what we're supposed to do. If a Christian goes out there to debate, then he's lost the purpose and the spirit of evangelism. Evangelism is not to debate. Evangelism is to preach the word of Christ. But when we are confronted by obstacles, blasphemers, blasphemies and objections, then we have to destroy those objections, destroy those blasphemies, remove all obstacles to give the person no excuse not to believe in the gospel. So he's taken a Christian truth 
and he's Islamicized it. The problem is with many Christians, they've gotten into the mindset of debate, debate, debate. No, that's not the approach. And I'm on record. And I'm going to repeat it again. I don't care to debate. So this fat slob is simply imitating me. This, this stone looking pagan, whom the Lord I pray will deliver into my hands sooner than later, this, this slob who makes Muhammad look decent, and that tells you a lot. I am on record saying I don't like to debate. I only debate when I have to, either to put a bully in his place or to silence any slander <clears throat> or accusation that maybe I'm afraid. But I don't like to debate. I don't care to debate. I would prefer to teach and people listen and answer sincere questions and objections. That's it. That's all I want to do. But I'm forced to debate. I'm forced to attack. I'm forced to ridicule and mock. I don't want that because at the end of the day, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to be offended. I don't want to stumble. I want to glorify Christ and magnify Christ and enjoy Christ and worship Christ with those who are open enough to hear the word of Christ. So keep that in mind. Amen. So now let's get to the meat. So All right. he, what he said, yeah, this is because part of Dawah includes you're going to have to debate. Like you, when you evangelize, when you want to yes. preach the gospel to your Urdu audience, do you not yes. end up having to refute arguments? Yes, I do. That's the thing. But do you want to do that or you want to just preach about Jesus? When I'm preaching about Jesus, I'm just preaching about Jesus. I don't want to bring anything else in it. Thank you, sir. So stop hating now. Let's get to the objection. What's his objection? All right. The first objection. Multiple Bibles. Here you go. Version, but technically, they do not agree that this is the correct number. Inshallah, Mark knows it. So this is the King James Version. This here is the New World Translation. The New World Translation is a translation put together by Jehovah's Witnesses, JW. Right? Now, Christians have many sects, right? But these are still within Christendom, right? This is okay. Jehovah Witness and King James, they are still inside Christendom. Yeah, Brothers, Christian, yeah. So according to him, the Ahmadiyya are still within Islam. The Druze are still within Islam. The Alawi are still within Islam. And the Nation of Islam are still within Islam. Is that what he's saying? Uh, that's why I was so pissed when I heard that. How no, dare okay. he say that? No, no, that's fine. We're going to play his game. So the Alawi, who basically follow Ali and worship Ali, a sect of Shia, they are still within Islam. The Druze, which is a sect of Shia, they are still within Islam. The Ahmadiyya, the Qadiani, who believe that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is not just the prophet after Muhammad, but a messenger and the Messiah, because Jesus died and was buried in India. So he is the Messiah that Muhammad said would come. Then that sect is still within Islam and the nation of Islam headed by Louis Farrakhan, who believes Allah is a black man, and the first people were black people, they're all within Islam, right? Apparently, he only said, I'll show you, he only said, it's not like Baha'ism. So he removed Baha'ism from Islam and Why? nothing else. Why? Who made him God or a messenger to say who is and is not a Muslim? The Baha'is claim to acknowledge Muhammad as a prophet, the Quran as a revelation, and even Baha'ism is an in Iranian religion. Baha'u'llah and the Bab were Persians, were Iranians, right? And, and both of them went to jail, one of them for 23 years. Anyway, you say there it's not like Baha'ism. No, Baha'ism is a sect of Islam. And it's even much better than Sunni Islam because that at least Baha'ism <clears throat> accepts Muhammad Whereas you don't accept anyone after Muhammad. No, this is, the guy's a joke. This is why the Slav won't debate. That's why he likes to control. You go there and he talks over you because he's a coward. He's like his prophet, a, a bastard. But anyway, that's that argument. You don't define who or who isn't a Christian for Christians. He doesn't have that right. He's not a Christian. He has no right to tell Christians who or who is not a Christian. But if he wants to play that game, then by the same token, Islam is a sect of Christianity. Islam is not a separate religion. It is a heretical false sect of Christianity. In fact, the earliest and oldest view of Islam, and you'll find it online, John of Damascus, John the Damascene, who was a Christian working for the Caliph in Syria. He wrote a tract against Islam, which you can find online. And he says that Muhammad was actually influenced by an Aryan. 
and that Islam is that Christian heresy of Arianism. That Muhammad was actually groomed by Arians to preach Arianism. And what is Arianism? Arianism is the view that Jesus is the first creature of God. So as far back as you go, Islam was not considered a separate religion. It was considered a heretical sect of Christianity where Muhammad was influ influenced by false Christian teachers to produce another false branch of Christianity. So I will say to him, Islam is Christianity. That's a very nice uh, logical answer. So there, uh, thank I, you, sir. Okay, let's check, check what he's going to show to everyone now. He, yes. Now that we have set the mind that you cannot call Jehovah Witness as Christians, and I have said that in my live chat so many times, it's unbelievable, I can't even count. But let's see what he's going to do. Is not, we're not talking about Baha'i or something, right? So, see? <laughs> this is the King James Version, and this is the Jehovah Witness Version. Both Christians, we're not talking about Catholics here. Catholic. Imagine that. Imagine that. So, so according to Catholic, like imagine that, brother, watch one second, one, uh, 10 seconds more. Catholics, they have their own number of books. See? So you yeah, tell I know me. What he's trying to do here. No, I understand. Saying that the King James Bible and the New World Translation have the same number of books, 66. So what he wants to do is take two Bibles that have the same number of books and put them, put them against each other. But brother, uh, okay, yeah. You understand what he's doing? Because the Catholics have 73 books. So he's saying, let's put that aside. Let's just go with Bibles that have the same number of books. King James, what he's holding, has 66 books. The New World Translation has 66 books. But this again shows he's either stupid like Muhammad or he's deceitful because in the original King James, when it came up, okay, 1611, they had those books that the Catholics accept. It was in the original 1611 edition of the King James, which you can actually find a facsimile online. You can go online, the original King James of 1611, you'll find a facsimile of it, meaning a version of it. And they had those books that are in the Catholic Bible. It wasn't until later on, I believe around the 19th century, where it was removed. But up until then, every King James Bible had those books that are found in the Catholic Bible. But brother, when it comes to, I'm sorry, please, please educate me if I'm wrong. When it comes to the New Testament, the books are same, correct? Yes. Catholics, Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox, and Protestants have the same 27 books of the New Testament. Now, why is this analogy false? Because this is where Christians fall for the trap. Mm -hmm. This is where Christians fall for the trap. When you compare the Bible to the Quran, that's a stupid comparison. And you guys got to stop because the Bible yes. is not one book. It's a collection of books. Different authors. So that if you're going to compare Quran with the Bible, you compare book by book. So you compare Luke with the Quran. Because the Quran is not a collection of different books by different authors. So they claim. The Quran is supposedly one author, Muhammad. So why are you comparing the Quran with a list of books? You compare book by book. Either you compare the Quran with Matthew or Quran with John. And that's the comparison. Correct. But then it still even gets worse for him. Because even though the Quran supposedly came through one human being, one individual, one source, even the Muslim sources say that his own companions could not agree how many chapters that one book consisted of. We know Abdullah ibn Masood, to his chagrin, only had 111 chapters that he said were part of the Quran because Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, and the last two surahs, chapters 113, 114, were prayers and vocations. They're not surahs. Ubay ibn Kaab, who was the other person that Muhammad mentioned, whom the Hadith, Bukhari, says, was the master of the Quranic reciters. Mm -hmm. Ubay ibn Kaab included 116. But then Uthman ibn Affan only had 114. That 114 that was collected by Zayd ibn Thabit during the caliphate of Abu Bakr. The problem is, when Abu Bakr had Zayd collect the Quran, he kept it in his possession, then Umar kept it in his possession, and then Hafsa kept it in her possession, and it was in hiding. It was in public. So now, how is it that one man who transmits one book has his companion so confused they can't agree how many chapters that one man said makes up that book? Is it 111? Is it 114 or 116? Absolutely. And, two of the men, and two of the men that disagree, two of the men that disagree, in Bukhari Muslim, we can bring it up. It's in sunnah.com, or you can bring it up as I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. When Muhammad mentioned the four men to learn the Quran from, he didn't say Zayd ibn Thabit. He said the four men, Abdullah ibn Masood, and it says he started with him first. Ubay bin Kaab, 
two out of the four. Now, these are the two who, when they wrote down the Quran from memory, could not agree on the exact number of verses or the wording of the verses or the exact number of chapters. So if two of the four men, the Muhammad said, learn the Quran from, can't agree how many verses that man told them are part of the Quran and how many chapters, you have the audacity to attack the books of the Bible? Absolutely, brother. You are right on spot. And, uh, uh, it's going to get worse when I use modern versions. A lot of people know. Did you know that there are modern, modern Qurans? There is the Quran, a reformist translation. And then the Quran by Rashid Khalifa. And there's another Quran produced by Quran only Muslims. And I'll show you. In their Quran, chapter 9, they end at verse 127. Yep. They have omitted verses 128, 129 as fabrications, as forgeries that were never given by Muhammad. But let's Absolutely. continue. I don't know what else he's going to say because I said a mouthful already. Yeah. We're not hearing what he had to say. Okay. He's going to go and show you something. Please show me. Here, when we go to the Bible, in Matthew 18 11, Matthew 18 11, okay, in the New it's World down. Translation, is just an asterisk. There's no verse, it's blank. Why? Because they said that according to the research of their manuscripts, this was a fabrication. There was no such verse, so they delete. So if you go here, there is no such verse. Do you want me to just By talk way, about How many examples does he give? Uh, at this point, just one. Then he gives another example later. Yeah, okay. So Matthew 18, 11. And what else does he say? Because I want him to make his point so we can bury him. Oh, no. He'll, he'll move into Quran uh, okay. from here. And then All go right, back to Bible out later time. Yeah, I know this. Uh, Matthew 17, 21, Matthew 18, 11. In, in the King James, in fact, you're going to have to bring it up on the screen. Sure. One, bring up BibleGateway.com. Put in Matthew 10, Matthew 18, verses 10 to 12. And you're going to bring up two versions. I'm going to show you how it works. How do I do two versions? Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do, well, and it's Matthew is two T's, not one, but it's okay. 10 to 12. You can use New King James because New King James follows the same family manuscripts that the King James does. Now click on that. I'm going to show you something beautiful about BibleGateway.com. Now scroll down. Now you see the telephone up there? Go up, go up, go up. Oh, no, no. The telephone right there, those like two phones to your left. It looks like two phones. My left? Look okay, at your screen one? right there. Yep, yeah. this one. Click on it. It gives you a parallel. Now you have two Bibles open. Nice. Okay, now this is going to give you an idea of what he's talking about. What are you doing? Why are you okay. opening up? Why are you opening those up? It's stuck for a lot of blood. You got two Bibles in front of you. Why are you opening up another one? No, I was moving it to NA, uh, the new NSEBV. You want me to headbutt you? Why? Just okay. stay there because it makes the point. Okay. You know I'm going to lose my testimony with you again because you and Hussein make me lose my testimony live. And people already know I got anger issues. Uh -oh. That's why Tatiana doesn't want to marry me because of you. Oh, Dude. poor Tatiana. Uh, Okay, Matthew 18, 10 to 12, read it in the New King James to your left. Now let everyone know to your left is the New King James. Okay, 10 to 12. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99 and go to the mountain to seek the one that he is, that is straying? Okay, now that's a new King James, which is based on the same family of manuscripts where we get the King James. Now, NIV, New International Version, is based on some of the earlier Greek copies that were discovered in the 19th century, 20th century. Read Matthew 18, 10 to 11 in NIV, which is to your right. So everyone knows to the right is the NIV. Right of your screen, that's NIV, New International Version. To the left, it's it's New King James Version. Read Matthew 18, 10 to 11. And it says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. 11. There's no it's verse 11. Mm -hmm. There's no verse 11. Now, if you, cl if you click on the A in the brackets, it gives you a note. Some manuscripts it? includes here the words of Luke 19.10. Okay, now, he said it's a forgery. No, it's not. What it is, is that there are a number of manuscripts that have the verse and some don't. So now, do we then omit it 
or do we include it? It depends on your view of the textual transmission. What do I mean? If you believe that the earlier Greek copies, because they are closer to the original and are more likely to be reliable, then you're going to question Matthew 18, 11, and assume that a later scribe added it. Now, why did he add it? He could have added it because somehow he was being negligent and assume maybe he had read Luke 17 or Luke 19, 10, and that came to his mind as he was writing this. But it's more likely that Matthew 18, 11 is original and it was dropped out. But here's the beauty of the manuscript tradition. Notice it's not lost. It's there. Meaning Matthew 18, 11 is there in the manuscripts. Not all have it, but most do. So it's not lost. It's preserved. This is unlike what happened with the Quran, where Uthman burned all the copies of the Qurans that were written by the eyewitnesses of Muhammad. So then he standardized one copy that he determined to be more reliable. So that means now Muslims are dependent on the mercy of a man who is not inspired, who's not a prophet to tell you this is the authentic one. All these other Qurans with all these variants and verses that are omitted or added and chapters omitted, they're all fake. We don't have that. So that we still have nearly 30,000 copies of the books of the Bible in various languages. So that once a verse is in the textual stream and the transmission stream, it's stuck. It doesn't get lost. So it's not, this is a forgery. It's, is it authentic to Matthew or was it added? My opinion is it is authentic to Matthew because there is no reason that a scribe would add this verse right here in Matthew 18.10 to make it agree with Luke 19.10 because Luke 19 and Matthew 18 are not parallel. So that means internally, externally, it's most likely this was in Matthew, but then it was omitted, not because some scribe was being evil and pernicious, because people make mistakes and sometimes they skip a line. Don't you to this day, when you're trying to copy a book, Sometimes your eye skips a line and you miss the line that came right after the previous line and unbeknownst to you, you're thinking you didn't miss anything. Yes, that is correct. It happens, right? Now imagine anyone who's written anything by hand, you'll be writing something out and you're looking at one line and as you turn to write, you come back and then your eye skips the next line for the line right after and you think it's the line that immediately came from the previous one you wrote. And so you write it and then you find out later, hey man, I'm missing something. Now imagine the situation before the printing press, before computers, before emails, before lighting, where everything candle light, right? And you had to write by by hand in an ink pen. Before all the modern technology, the kind of conditions that every scribe of any book found himself in, whether a Christian scribe copying books of the Bible or a Muslim scribe or a Hindu, you're going to find variant readings because pre-printing press, pre-computer typewriter, everything's written by hand. They didn't have electricity. They sometimes had to use candlelight, right? And sometimes you can write in freezing conditions where they didn't have heating and imagine the nature of the copies. And it's not just true of the Bible. We already know... And thanks to the research of our sister Hatun, she's already documented over 38,000 differences. No, no, I'm sorry. Was it close to 90,000 differences of the 38 different Arabic versions of the Quran? Yeah, she's, uh, I don't remember the number, but yeah, you're right. She has a difference in thousands, correct? And the point is, it's there. We didn't lose it. In other words... Matthew 18, 11 is still there in the manuscript tradition. We didn't lose it. But moreover, let's assume someone added it. How does that change the meaning and the theology of Matthew? Especially when that same saying is found in Luke 19, 10, and it's not disputed. So how does it change anything? The over 90,000 variants. Yep. Right? How does it change? So let's agree with him. Okay, someone added this. How does this change the theology when the same book of Matthew in passages that no one disputes, they are authentic to Matthew because the manuscript tradition proves it, shows that Jesus came to save those who are sinners. And if you're a sinner, you're lost. And we find the similar saying in Luke 19, 10, and no one disputes its authenticity. It is firmly established by the manuscript stream. So what are you proving by this variant? 
I have no idea because this is the most easiest thing to to refute because it's already there in Luke 1910. <laughs> yeah, but I now, know. let's turn to tables on him. Let's re return the favor to this wicked, filthy slob. This is why I hope he debates me, but not try to talk over me because I'll humiliate him. And if he tries to fight, we'll see what kind of fighter he is. He thinks he's a tough guy, a fat slob. But anyway, let's turn the tables on him. I want you to go to cronbrowser.com. Okay. Give me a sec, brother. I want to show you two translations. Okay. I hope I'm not speaking too fast for the rest of you. I hope everyone got it. Let me know if you want me to slow down and repeat myself, right? All right, brother. Okay, now do me a favor. Mm -hmm. I want you to open up. Well, here, let me show you how to do this. Okay. Put in where it says Khalifa. Now here they may include it without the notes. So just put click on Khalifa. I am on. trying to find Khalifa. Okay, found okay. Khalifa. And I'll put nine. Just put nine. Nine. Okay, now click submit. Oh, that's it. Okay. Okay, and then go scroll down till you get to the end, and then click on it until you go to the end. All the way down, it's it now click where it says here for more, because here we break it down into 50 verses. 50, 50. Okay. Go down to the end where it says more. You're going to have to do it twice. Now, here we don't have the footnotes to Khalifa, so I'm just double checking. Okay, oh. see? Oh, okay. 9, 120, 129. What does the note say? Khalifa considered this verse to be satanic and not in the Quran. <laughs> no, he did. And that's why he was murdered. One of the reasons why Rashad Khalifa was murdered. He was murdered in Arizona. Now, I keep forgetting the year and the place. I think it was Tucson, Arizona. A Sunni Muslim stabbed him to death in his mosque because Rashid Khalifa claimed to be a messenger after Allah. And he says, Allah revealed to him the miraculous mathematical pattern of 19. And that mathematical code proved to him that those two verses were added by Satan, and he omitted them. Mashallah. <laughs> and he was murdered. He was murdered. You can go on Google, brother, fact check me. Go to Google, put Rashad, R-A-S-H-A-D, Rashad Khalifa, murdered. And it'll tell you, it was in Arizona. I keep forgetting if it's Tempe or Tucson. I believe it was Tucson. He was Let stabbed to death in his mosque. Uh... And they caught his murderer years later in Canada. He had escaped. And Bilal Phillips, the Sunni, is on record praising the man who murdered Rashad Khalifa. Okay, yep. so in Tucson. Tucson, Arizona, Tuscon, January yeah. 31st, 1990. Yep, yeah, I'm showing it to everyone now. This is a Wikipedia link. And it says, on January 31st, 1990, Khalifa was found stabbed to death inside the Masjid Mosque of Tucson, Arizona. Wow. Okay. So 19 now, years after the murder, the guy who murdered him got caught. caught. Yeah, okay, now watch the point. You have, you have a modern Quran that's still in print that says chapter 9, verse 128, 129 are satanic corruptions. They were not revealed by Allah and they're omitted. But he's not the only one. Let me give you another Quran. Now remember, these are Muslims. Remember he said Joe's witnesses are Christians, right? Mm -hmm. These are Muslims. Here's another Quran, brother. Here's the link. You can okay. open up, and I've told people to save this in the past, but you should save it. It is another Quran that was recently translated, not too many years ago, by a group of Quran-only Muslims headed by Edip Yuksel. Edip Yuksel is a Turkish Muslim who used to follow Rashad Khalifa. He and a group of Muslims, he and a group of Muslims, they translated this Quran with notes. Now, what I want you to do to make it easier for you, if you have a Mac, you do command, F and put mm -hmm. 9 colon 127. 9 colon 127. And it'll take you there. It'll take you to this. See right there. You see? Now notice, where is 128, 129? Okay, let's read. Um... Put 128, 129 in italics right under beneath there. You see it? Yep, it's done. It's there, but they don't include it as part of the Quran. You caught it? Mm -hmm. Why? Now go down. You, they have a note there. Look what they say. They have a note. Keep going. And notes here in the same yeah. book. Keep reading. Yeah, you're going to see. It says 9, 1, 20, 8, 20. And there's going to keep going, bro. It's not for a lot of that. Where are you going, dude? Keep going down. Allah, Allah. You're going to get pressured, like scared, like that. This guy. Uh, you are breaking up keep somehow. Going. What? Hold on. You are breaking up somehow. No, I'm not, you wicked sinner. I'm not breaking up. Can you hear me now? Now I can. Okay. Okay. Did you so go I'm down? Going to to 9, Read what yeah, they say. 
So the asterisk should be somewhere here. I am trying to find the asterisk. You were there and then you lost your place. No, I'm, I'm back here. I'm back here. I'm back here on the stream yard. I'm back. Go down, man. Go down, man. Down, man. Why like this? Go down. You're gonna see that on. Okay, I am down here on the end of the page, brother. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Okay, next page. Okay, we are in next page. Keep on, brother. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Okay, I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. Down, down, down. More down. Okay, let's more down. Uh, one twenty-four. Down, 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 down. Okay, keep going. Down, 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 down. You see 9127 okay, right there? Yep. Okay. Now read the note. Uh, where is the note, brother? Seriously, I can't find the note. Okay. So, Do you see uh, the numeric you structure of the Quran leads us to accept this chapter having 127 verses rather than 129, and it rejects the additional statements found in the modern manuscript which are written here in italicis. This major correction is imposed on us by the Quran's own testimony, by its authenticating system. The correction made by the numerical structure of the Quran is also supported by numerous historical events as reported. See chapter number 74 and appendix on this 19. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. Okay, so we just buried this fat slob by his own argument, right? Absolutely. So okay, but now it's going to get worse for you, first from. Uh, this is the beginning. Be patient, brother. Just breathe and listen carefully so I don't lose my testimony and lose more hair. Go to alim.org. Let's walk through All this. Right. Alim.org. All right. Let me just give this link to everyone to download by themselves. Alim.org. All right. A L M A L I M dot org. O R G. Org. org. There you go, brother. We are at alim.org. Now, let me walk you through this so you can learn how to use it. It's going to mm -hmm. tell you Quran translations. You see where it says Quran? By the Alam, the word Alam? Mm -hmm. It's your cursor by the Quran, but you got to enlarge it because we can hardly see it. Oh, sorry. Let me just enlarge it. I know you wear glasses, so you can see. We can't see. Okay? All right. Go where it says uh, Quran translate. You see where it says translations? Open it up. Translations. Translations? Yeah. Go to Asad. You see where it says Asad? Translation by Asad. Yep. Click on it. Yeah. Now go to 33. 33, hold on. 4, 5, 11, 14, 20, 26, 33. Let's open 33. Okay, we are at 33, brother. Now go to verse 6 and read us verse 6. Okay, let me zoom in a little more for the people to read as well. Let's read 6. And the bracket starts. As for you, oh, sorry, six. No, that's not six. The yeah. prophet has a higher claim on the believers than they have on their own slave, uh, selves, seeing that he is a father to them. Now, and you notice the words, seeing that he is, is a father to them. Uh, brother, is it me who's breaking up or is it Sam who's <laughs> breaking up? Guys, tell me yeah, who's breaking. Is it me or Sam? Yeah. Uh, guys on the live chat? Brackets? Do you see it's in brackets? Yes, brother. I can see in the brackets. Yeah. All right. You see it says, okay, now, you see the number eight? Yes, brother. Click on eight. Click on it. Okay. The eight. The eight that's in red. Yes, brother. It is showing, but it is here. Okay. Thus, connecting with the preceding mention of the voluntary elective relationship as con contrasted with those by blood, this verse points to the highest manifestation of an elective spiritual relationship, that of the God-inspired prophet and the person who freely choose to follow him. The prophet himself is reported to have said, none of you has real faith. Okay, Brother Sam was left out. None of you has real faith unless I am dearer unto him than his father and his child and all mankind, Bukhari and Muslim, on the authority of Anas, with several almost identical versions in other compilations. The comparison invariably regarded the prophet as the spiritual father of his community.
some of them for example ibn masud as quoted by some zamakshari you know you should know this guy zamakshari come on zamakshari or yeah. ubay ibn kaab ibn abbas and muawiya has quoted by ibn kathir hardly ever recited the above verse without adding by way of explanation ex- explanation seeing that he is a father to them do you see and what he has submitted to you i don't think you got it yes i got it okay, i got it okay that, explain that he should be like the current quran does not have that he is the father you got it so he, he is he saying that admit, muhammad asad a convert to islam is that you admit that the quran's the masahif of ibn masud ubay bin kaab ibn abbas muawiya and then he also mentions mujahid katada ikraman hasan they all included this sentence as part of the verse which is omitted in the uthmanic quran wow awesome awesome i had one source now i have many sources to show awesome praise god so many people learn from muhammad the chapter 33 for 6 had the phrase and he muhammad is a father to them absolutely brother absolutely number two of the four people muhammad said learn the quran from ibn masud and ubay kaab they had it exactly. ibn abbas had it muawiya had it ikrama had it katada had it right yes okay why is it missing in today's quran what come uthman doesn't have it because according to at tafsir ibn qurtubi uthman said to the guy don't read it as muhammad is the father of uh, you people but who gave uthman that right when ibn abbas muhammad's cousin ibn masud ubay bin kaab two of the four that muhammad said learn the quran from right muawiya and then on top of that mujahid katad ikram al hasan all of them agree muhammad taught us this is part of the ayah absolutely give them, the give them the link they want the link the link oh, okay sorry there you go guys the link man i'm loving it um, sam always comes up and gives some new sources now go back to alam.com now look at yusuf ali translation all right let me just preserve this link as well just give me a sec man i have two things you have like so many going back now open up yusuf ali go to 33 verse 6 again same okay. verse and read his note there Okay, let's go to Quran. Okay, let's go to Alam dot org so that we. Here, that right one, and they have Yusuf Ali with the commentary. Okay, it is. If you go to the Quran section, yeah. Yeah, Quran translations Yusuf Ali, Ali and go to chapter number thirty-three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am loving it. Mm-hmm. Verse number six. Let's go to verse number six. And you know, three six seven four in red. I think that will be the one of them are the notes. In human relationships, the If prophet. If you want to enlarge it, we can hardly oh, see it, okay. and it may be Sorry. three six seven five. All right. Let me. Is this it, is this large enough or more? Yeah. It should be three six seven five. It's not three six seven four. Click on it. Three six seven five. Yeah, read it here. It should be here, or does it say it here? No, no. It's not three six seven six. Check. It's one of those. But check. Okay. Okay uh, yes in the early Medinan period there was a bond of okay. brotherhood I go back up 33 verse 6 go back up 33 verse 6 I want to see something here this is it go to 3675 I think this version omitted his note of the Lee Safari they omitted his note they were embarrassed uh yeah see these cowards omitted the note wow look at how filthy and dishonest they are open up uh, 3674 Yep, this is this. in human relationship perfect entitled to most respectful and considerate than blood relationship the What believer should follow them yeah 3675 let's see 3675 you see what they did they omitted the note from Yusuf Ali he said that in many Qurans it had the words he's a father to them they omitted it you see what they did here mm-hmm. you see how dishonest these muslims are these filthy wicked demons but now let me find you another of the Yusuf Ali online that has the notes Hold on. Wow, man. I say I can't I don't have a hard copy. I don't know if you have a hard copy. Even if you did, you don't like to show your face, but that's okay. Do you have a hard copy of Abdul Yusuf Ali with the notes? No, brother, I do not. Okay, let me get it online. They should have it online. I can't believe what they just did. My goodness. Here, I think I I found one that will have the notes. Let me find it. Hold on, guys. See what the Muslims no do. No worries. No worries, brother. Take your time. 
Mm-hmm. What they do, they even, they even corrupt their own Qurans. They even corrupt their own Qurans. Now, I have to find, I know there's one that has Abdullah Yusuf Ali with the notes. I got to find it. Unbelievable. Okay. They have no respect, no class. They're like this guy. Um, what's his name? <laughs> Ibn, F- Ibn Farooq. Yep. Guys, sorry about that. I thought they would have the note there, but that just tells you the kind of people they are. I think I found it. Let me see. Yeah, I found it. Here it is. 33 verse 6. Let me get you the link. Mm-hmm. This one we found. Here it is. Open it up, brother, and show. This is the one. All now right. watch how they even butcher their own sources. I think they get away with it because they think there are people like us who don't know. All right. Now let's go to... You got a large volume? Yes, yes, yep. I will do that. Just give me a sec. Let me just zoom it in. Uh, there we go. Let's go to 33. Uh, 33. Oh, we have to do, we have to download a PDF for that. Okay. Uh, whatever, man. Just open it. I don't think you need to, but enlarge it a little more. We can't see. Yep. Let me just uh, do that. That's part, yeah. All right, let's go to verse number six. Yeah. Um, it is six, man. Wow, that's a huge commentary of every verse. Okay. 33, one to eight. Okay, hold two, on. Hold on. Three. Okay, I'll keep, going. keep going. This is two, three, four, and five, and six. Okay. All right. What, the Prophet is closer than their own selves? And here his wife's her mother. You see that? You see it? You passed it up, dude. It's 3674. Read it. Yeah. In spiritual relationships, the prophet is entitled to more respect and consideration than blood relations where there is a conflict of duties. He is ever nearer, closer to our real interest than ourselves. In some kiras, like the like that of Ubay ibn Kaab, occur also the word and he is a father of them which implies his spiritual relationship and connection on with the words and his wives and their mothers so why did alam.org omit that part they don't they are like they are hiding what else okay, did everyone see it this is the uh, real version of abdullah yusuf ali you just got proof that muslims are also tampering with their own books Abdullah Yusuf, Ali is dead. Abdullah Yusuf Ali is dead and he has no control over what they're doing to his book, his translation. Now, guys, this is the Abdullah Yusuf Ali. This is what his original note said. He admits there are some Qur'ans qira'at, that had this phrase and he's a father of them because that's how Muhammad taught Ubay Kaab, Abdullah, Abdullah bin Masood and others the verse. Uthman omitted it, but now this was the real version of you, Abdullah Sawali. It's no 3674. Now show them, Alam, what Alam did. Show them how they remo- remove that. And this three, man has six, seven, four, have just the first line, the rest of the lines they omitted. <laughs> they, they just cut the two, last two paragraphs where Ubay's uh, work is written. See that? See what they did? There you go. So what's the point? I just showed you from the modern Qurans, at least two verses that have been removed and a phrase that was originally part of the Quran that's been removed. And yet Muhammad Assad includes it in brackets. Mm-hmm. And this man has the audacity to talk about the Bible, let alone what his own fake prophet, his son of the devil said about the Bible. Now let's go on and see what else he says. Is there anything else he says? Uh, yeah, let's go let's there. See. Yeah, let's go to the juicy parts you want me to address because this took a lot a long time no no that's okay uh it doesn't matter how long it takes as long as we are we are talking fully so now he goes in and saying uh quran is perfectly preserved you have already addressed it you want to play forget that part we destroyed the part forget that we just proved the guy's a liar his quran is perfect trash all right (laughs) so let's go to uh 3130 is very, very important because he actually admitted, because now he's just talking about Quran is perfectly preserved and all that, yada, 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 and all that, yada, yada, yada. But then at 3130, I'm just trying to go there. Don't go to sleep. 
please. Okay. Yeah, I'm reading the exact same thing. It's just how I elongate, how I preface the words, how I do this, because the Quran was not revealed with dots and things like we see today. Right? People looking at the differences of recitations and realizing the Bible has real contradictions and seeing the Quran does not, thought, aha, we got it. You got different Qurans. No, no, no. If I take Shakespeare and read it in the British accent or an American accent, or it doesn't mean it's a different book. Right? It doesn't mean the verses are there. I mean, no Quran begins with a different surah than Al-Fatiha. Okay, now, here I'm going to answer, Brother Sam, because yes. he's talking about the dots. So, uh, let me show him the different dots in different kiras of Quran. This, is, this website is called nquran.com. And it has 21 different type of Qur'ans in it. Okay. This is Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter number 33, same chapter, but verse number 68. Okay. Uh, if you actually do this, and you will see that here they have, sorry, Ikhtiyar Rawaya, they have 21 different type of Qur'ans. Each and every, I have to shorten it so that, let me just see if I can zoom and still be there. So, yeah. So it has Kalun, Warsh, Warsh al Nafi, Al Bayzi, Al Duri, Al Susi, Hashim, Ibn Zakun, An Asim, An Hamza, An uh, Ham, uh, Khalad Al An Hamza, Abu Haris, and etc. etc. So there are 21 different types of Qurans that you can find in this website at the same time. Now he said the early Quran does not have dots. So now what happened is that Hafs, here the word is Kabira. Kaf, Be, Ya, Re, Alif, Kabira. Now, what happened was, in the Kaloon version, it's Kasira. It's Kasira. The difference between Kabira and Kasira is that Allah is saying, Allah sent Lan and Kabira, means Allah sent a huge, big atomic bomb kind of a curse. Kabir, huge, big curse, atomic bomb curse, okay? Now, the second, uh, second Kaloon version of Quran says, Lanan Kasira. Allah sent so many curses, like uh, machine gun. How did it make a difference is simple. Let me show you. Let me show you. Early Quran did not have any thoughts. And Brother Sam did not like me talking, so he went off. Yeah. So, so we will read, this is how the early Quran was, right? This is how the early Quran was. Now, so how can you read it? Can you read it as Kasira or Kabira? So one guy, when he was reading, he wrote three dots up here. And he read it as Kasira. The other guy actually did not uh, write three dots on the above. He just wrote one dot in the bottom and it became Kabira. So is Kasira right or is Kabira right? Which one is right? This one or this one? So this is the difference when you get to know the Quran without dots versus the Quran with dots. And this is just one one difference. There are so many other differences in different versions. Ta'alamun versus Yalamun um, and so on and so forth. There are so many of them. But this is a major difference because the mini, the, dif the, the meaning differs. The meaning differs. Katal versus Kutal. Kill versus fight. Oh, sorry. Fight versus kill. So the verse that he did not wrote and ran away is actually Katal versus Kutal. So... And if you see nquran.com back again, there are more differences. Now, this is just the dot differences. Then if you go down, you see either atihim has meme has a shadda on the top. Whereas here, uh, here it has a page and a vow over here. Atihum. So there is a page or a shadda. The diacritical marking difference, which makes a little bit of a meaning difference, not too huge, but when we say the Kasira versus Kabira, there is a huge difference. There is a huge difference. So, Kasiran, 
here you see double dashes at the ra right double dashes here you will see uh, down here in another green let's go to the green it's a very good site because it gives you the green and red and color coding so that you could actually see exactly where the differences are so let me go to the green difference uh, kabira kasira and uh, it should be here somewhere because it's too big of a zoom for me it's hard to find now so anyhow you will see differences with the color coding and you can go to exact location and you will see for example the the meme page wow here and so on and so forth it's all color coded in the same one for example here it's just a shadda so the dots difference in itself is not a small difference it's a huge problem in itself but he described for over 14 minutes that quran has no difference and it is just linguistically like saying schedule or schedule like saying uh, i am he or he uh, i am that guy what do you say sam no that's what i'm saying he puts me to sleep because what he doesn't tell these people this is why people are leaving islam and they hate allah and muhammad and they hate these people because when the muslims are confronted by people like adam or david wood or myself and they're given facts from their sources and they find out that they were hiding these facts from them they get they get sad they get depressed and angry for example like ultimate fart he's still upset that he found out that his mother was a shia whore who did muta and that muhammad was a dog whom uh, all the dogs pissed on and crapped on Uh, because he's still wondering why the Shia didn't pay his wife for the muta they did with her. But coming back to the issue, <clears throat> when they find out the facts from their sources uh, that the Quran wasn't uniform, there are different Qurans, and Uthman destroyed many of them. And even today, the Quran is not one, and there are major di- v- verbal variations among the Qurans. Then they lose any trust and hope in their scholars. and sadly many of them become atheists or agnostic but they don't become christian and our prayer is that they become christian by the grace of jesus christ but coming to one other point that he doesn't mention what do i mean by when they find out the true facts he said all qurans begin with surah al-fatiha what he doesn't say because he's a fat slob he's a coward he's a son of the devil like muhammad was who's now burning in hell praise you lord jesus and muhammad is in hell may you destroy him with eternal destruction for doing this to mankind and save muslims from him now he doesn't tell you that abdullah ibn masud this is a fact guys you'll find this in bukhari and all the muslim sources i'm not making it up abdullah ibn masud in fact brother if you want to bring up the hadith from bukhari where the four men that muhammad mentioned he started with masud and mentioned ubay ibn ka abdullah ibn masud's quran mm-hmm. did not start with surah al-fatiha so Yes, it's true today after Uthman destroyed the Qurans, burned the Qurans. Yes, it's true that today when you open up a Quran it starts with Surah Al-Fatiha. But it's not true that before the reign of Uthman the Quran started with Surah Al-Fatiha because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who was teaching the Quran in Iraq to his followers, his Quran did not have Surah Al-Fatiha chapter 1. It did not have chapters 113 114 he omitted them because he said these are prayers they are not surahs you see so he's he and he's got to know this right because he claims to be a scholar so why wouldn't he mention this so say well that's ibn masud's opinion no it isn't ibn masud is not a joe schmo he's not a joke ibn masud was one of the four men that Muhammad said learn the Quran from. So are you telling us that your prophet who's an idiot, we know he's an idiot and he's burning in hell, that he didn't know who to choose to teach people the Quran because he chose Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and said that he is one of the four you learn the Quran from. Ibn Mas'ud said that Surah Al-Fatiha is not part of the Quran. So if Ibn Mas'ud is wrong, that means Muhammad is an idiot, a clown because he chose the wrong one to teach people the Quran. See? Exactly. There you go. And there are multiple uh, references even from the Muslim sites who are trying to show that Ibn Mas'ud is this and that and etc. He had some, you know, 
issues with whatever and whatever so that's the reality of the situation guys but anyhow ibn farooq it doesn't matter for ibn farooq because he does not want to preach the truth unlike he wants to preach the lie so the are these uh, i mean what else does he say i mean basically we show oh, yes. basically... one more thing uh hold on no Quran. hold on there is one more thing we'll go to hebrews now that's a uh, that one we're going to have fun with this guy oh uh 36 and there is couple of couple of more where he says something like this there you go. bring up all the important yes, points because points this so we can expose this coward book has the mushaf one mushaf and it shows you all the different ways you could recite in all the qiraat based on one quran so how is brother based on one quran when we see that the meanings are different but anyhow i'm going to skip that part yeah, we already the part addressed that Hebrews, because we're going to have a field there with this comment. 36 verse 36 let's go there brother okay and but even when you get it it's got some things like here this is a chapter called hebrews which is in the new testament chapter and it is no no this is stupid the guy is an idiot why because it's not a chapter it's a book <laughs> exactly <laughs> 13 chapters but see again because he's an idiot like Muhammad he is examining the bible as one book consisting of surahs because a surah is a chapter see this is why it's mainly the fault of christians you let muslims get away with debating you the quran versus the bible that's not a fair analogy because the bible is a collection of books the quran is supposedly one so the analogy should be let's compare the quran with hebrews let's compare the quran with luke not a whole collection of books with one book suppose that came through one man but again he's an idiot like muhammad but let him let him finish his point yeah so let me just tell you the background now he is reading macarthur study bible okay, <laughs> okay. so yeah let's just tell you i'm telling you because i skipped that part so you should know where he is reading from okay, he's reading fine. from macarthur study bible and, and, and this is not focused towards even you know this is really focused towards preaching right evangelical kind of a thing right and But even when you get it, it's got some things like here. This is a chapter called Hebrews, which is in the New Testament, <laughs> and here it says the author of Hebrews unknown. And that's all he says. I mean, if your scholars don't know who wrote the book, he just speaks so much. So give me a second. How are we putting our faith in our Akhirah on this, right? The Quran, Subhanallah. Look, thank Allah. Everybody, thank Allah. Ibn Abi Harat رضي الله عنه وبي ابن كعب رضي الله عنه other sahaba who were scribes and memorizers we know all Wait, their names we know their biographies sorry brother see what he mentioned oh yes, ibn kaab right yep the very names he mentioned just confirm what we just said the very names that bury him and his prophet and his god and his crown down the toilet because these are the very men who could not agree how many chapters make up the crown how many verses each chapter which was why uthman destroyed the copies of the Qurans compiled by Ubay ibn Kaab. So you see how the Lord Jesus makes this guy look stupid, just like his prophet? By mentioning these names, he just confirmed what we said. These are the very men who could not agree, even though they heard the Quran directly from Muhammad, what the Quran actually was. And they debated exactly. each other, resulting in Uthman destroying their copies. So thank you, you Slav. That's why you're a coward and you bark and you don't debate. Glory to Jesus. But I can't even... Yeah, <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> Which we know the first time that it was compiled as a book format with Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. We know exactly who was involved. We can tell you their wives, their children, their biographies, every single guru. How can you tell us? I'm gonna pause there. Okay. How can you tell us their wives, their children, when the sources that tell you this come nearly 200 years after, supposedly when your prophet died? <laughs> How can you tell us that? How do you know who Ubay ibn Kaab is? Because you're quoting sources that are nearly 200 years after the death of your prophet, and you're assuming those sources are authentic. So we also will agree, for argument's sake, they're authentic. But those are the same sources that say these people, whom supposedly you know their genealogy, could not agree about the content of the Quran and almost came to blows and killed each other, which is why Uthman destroyed their copies. So how do you know who Ubay is? Can you give me any document? from the 7th century where muhammad supposedly lived that tells us who these people are who their families are can even do it in the 8th century in the 700s no because even ibn ishaq which you follow 
Ibn Ishaq, we don't have any copies of what he wrote, but we have what Ibn Hisham edited around 830 AD, about 200 years after Muhammad supposedly died. So notice he's assuming all these to be true, but he fails to prove a single assertion because he can get away with it because he's talking to some stone licking zombies like him. Absolutely, brother. And just to add to your beautiful point already. By the way, before you go on, Elias, I know your, your prophet is a whore and your mother did muta with the Shia. I was destroying Uthman's girls at the park and I have the video to show it, but I'm going to bury Uthman like Jesus buried Muhammad. But if you are more man than your mother, when she did muta with the Shia, can you come on Skype or come on StreamYard and debate me? Why are you waiting for a flop to defend you and your prophet? Are you not mad enough to defend your prophet that whore? So you're a little girl like Aisha when Muhammad mounted her to let Uthman do it for you? You stupid sure. stone looking bastard, Elias? Elias? I just sent the link for Elias only. Let's see if he Uthman, finds no it. No more like Uthman. Come and defend your bastard Muhammad. Be more man than Aisha. Don't wait for someone else to do it for you. Remember brother, don't, don't, don't call Muhammad bastard, brother. Bastards I are much better than him. The bastards yeah. are better than him. Go ahead. Exactly. So anyhow, uh, I lost my chain of thought. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're talking about uh, how he's assuming all yes. these facts without proving a single assertion. Exactly. So at the same time, uh, this is only tells you that Uthman collected the Quran. They do not tell you what surahs are in that Quran, 100%. what verses are in that Quran. You do not have that. And the Hadith tells you the reason why. It's in Sal Bukhari, volume 6, number 510. It says there was an expedition to <clears throat> Azerbaijan. Yes. And the general of the armies, Hudhaifa, this is, you can find at sunnah.com, Hudhaifa. Yes. He said when the Muslims from Syria and Iraq came to Azerbaijan. fight in Azerbaijan, the Muslims almost came to blows and started killing each other. Why? Because it says the Muslims in Syria who followed the Mus'haf of Uba ibn Ka'b, we're quoting verses that the Muslims from Iraq were following the Mus'haf of Ibn Masood had not heard. And the Muslims from Iraq were quoting verses that those from Syria did not heard. So they accused each other of adding and corrupting the Quran and they almost came to blows and killed each other. So Hudhaifa sent message to Uthman, they're about to come to blows and they're disagreeing about the Quran like the Jews and Christians disagree about their books. Do something about it. That's when he commissioned Zayed and several others to take the copy of Hafsa and make copies of Hafsa, the Quran that was entrusted to Hafsa, the one she inherited from Umar ibn al-Khattab, who inherited from Abdullah ibn Masood, that was done by Zayed. And he made copies of that. And he said, if you disagree on anything, write it in the Qureshi dialect. This is Sayyid Bukhari, volume six, number 510. And then he ordered that all the other Qurans be collected and be burned. And initially, Abdullah ibn Masood refused. He goes, I'm not going to give up my Quran for the Quran of Zayd because I had already memorized over 70 surahs when Zayd was still an unbeliever and a baby in Medina. But he was forced to do so. But it was too late because there are others who had memorized and written down the Qurans they learned from Uba ibn Kaab, Abdullah ibn Masood that survived, which is why later on you find Muslims mentioning what was in the Masahib the codices of Abdullah ibn Masood and Uba ibn Kaab that are not in what you have today. This is the hadith that you are mentioning. Read it for them. Yeah. Hudayfa bin al Yaman bin al Yaman came to Uthman at a time when the people of Sham and the people of Iraq were waging war to conquer Armenia. And Armenia, that's Armenia and Azerbaijan. By the way, Azerbaijan had a large contingent of Assyrian Christians, my ancestors, and Armenians are Christians. So just to let you know who they're attacking. Yeah. Udaifa was afraid of their people of Sham and Iraq, differences in the recitation of the Quran. So he said to Uthman, O chief of believers, save this nation before they differ about the book Quran as Jews and Christians did before. And by so, the way, brother, before you go on, guys, I want you to give all glory to the child God. May he destroy our pride, our flesh and sin, and make us in love with Jesus. Did you know, I recalled all this from memory, and you see how accurate we try to be, unlike this fat slob? Everything I told you, he's a witness, this brother's a witness. I didn't prepare, I have no notes, I trust the Holy Spirit, because I know our God is real, Jesus is alive, the Holy Spirit is real, and by his power we conquer. 
Notice, I'm recalling from memory, and look how sound and factual we are. Because unlike this Slav who follows a demon called Allah and an immoral bastard named Muhammad, we follow the God of truth who commands us to speak the truth. So go ahead, brother. So Uthman sent a message to Hafsa saying, send us the manuscript of the Quran so that we may compile the Quranic material in perfect copies and return the manuscript to you. Hafsa sent it to Uthman. Uthman then ordered Zaid bin Tabad, Abdullah bin Az-Zubayr, Saad bin Al-As, and Abdul Rahman bin Harith. Who's As? Sorry? Saad's big ass, you said? What did you do? He used the Quran to... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You said Saad used the Quran to wipe his ass? What did you say? No, no, it says Saeed bin Al-As. Oh, so the ass, because Al-As means the ass. Okay, go. <laughs> okay. To re rewrite the manuscript in perfect copies. Uthman said to the three Qurayshi men, in case you disagree with Zaid bin Tabat on any point in Quran, then write it in the dialect of Quraysh. The Quran was revealed in their tongue. They did so. When they had written many copies, Uthman returned the original manuscript to Hafsa. Uthman sent the every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all other Quranic material, whether written in fragments, manuscript, or whole copies, be burned. Now, that's the big problem. How do you verify it? Okay. Uh, did you, catch what he did? you saw what he did, right? Yeah. My question to the Slav, why would Uthman need to destroy the Qurans written down by Muhammad's companions? Guys, understand what he did. Uthman took the very Qurans that Muhammad's companions, Abdullah bin Masood, Ubay bin Kaab, Ibn Abbas, others, had written from what they learned directly from Muhammad. He took them and burned them. Who gave him the right to burn these Qurans that were written by Muhammad's companions, two of whom Muhammad said learned the Quran directly from them? By what authority? He's not a prophet. He's not a messenger. Gabriel didn't come to him. But more, more importantly, why would you burn their Qurans if the disagreements were not, were not so great that they were contradicting one another? If the disagreements were minor, there's no need to burn them. The only reason why you burn them is because they are so different and contradictory that you had to get rid of them because of embarrassment. But that means the very companions of Muhammad had learned the Quran so differently and memorized it so differently that they were contradicting each other, showing what a joke this religion is. Absolutely. Give me, give me the link, by the way, they want the link. And we have Elias, brother. Let me bring oh, him up. Oh, good. Bring him up. Bring it up. All right, Elias, say something. Do you hear? That's what. You yeah, yeah good. so you don't need you don't need Uthman to defend you like a little girl, right? What Uthman? Which one? You said debate Uthman. So now we want to defend. Why you didn't want... you debate Uthman when you were on the park? Why did you? Oh, because I was destroying the girls who did muta with your mother. I have the video. You want to see the video? Yeah, sure. Show me the video. Okay, give me the video because give while video. Uthman was being schooled, I was those girls that did muta with your mother. I was schooling them. Hold on, let me get it. Can you show me the video? Yeah, I am going to show you the video, but now get show ready. Me the video. Shut up your mouth. Hey, show me the video. Hey, Elias, hey. You the video, and then you're Before. going to defend your whore Muhammad, you dumb dog. Yeah. Hold on. So, Elias, can you, can you defend? Okay, okay Elias. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me mute Here's him. Let me, let me mute him before. Okay, okay, like, Elias, me. listen. Yeah, before you go and renting and I have to throw you off, now you have a chance to have a reasonable talk. So Here's if video. you open can, for the talk. yes, let me open the video. Right, if, yeah, we will. We, I'm opening the video in the open meantime. It. Elias, in the meantime, in the meantime, if you have the truth, what's the problem? Yeah, yeah. There you go, the video. Okay, Watch brother. the video. Okay. 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 Sorry, okay. brother, you were saying okay. something? Yes, I don't want to insult dogs they're better than there's a video in front of your eyes there's right there i'm destroying these jihadis who murder people and rape women like your mother so now come back i want to ask you a question why are didn't you, okay? you debate to Uthman okay. Faruk? shut your pie hole dude why dude, didn't you debate? Anthony was destroying your slob now why did the okay. shia do muta with your mother are you okay you with said, them you doing said, muta you have, with you have a mother? video you have, you a, have video. a video it's right in front of your eyes you stupid stone licker it's right there oh, well, where is it that's what's fun Get rid of this dog. Well, why you're, did Isaiah... What? Shut up, get out of here, you stupid dog. See, that's the problem. If he's here to defend, like, why did you not debate who? Why did you not... Uh, that fat slob was not even debating. Every time he was cornered, he said, I am a Thai. I showed a video, I made a video, 
where he said i am a dai maybe three or four times every time he was cornered he said i am a dai i am not a debater so what's the purpose what's the purpose of that debate no, anyway, when you are cornered you'll say that no waste your time anyway it's okay the video is right there guys the reason why i didn't deal with that slob because he was playing a hero three on one so i let anthony take care of it but david would embarrass us because he thought by being nice to Uthman and putting Anthony on the spot, it would actually help, but it backfired. So David humiliated us and he did. So I pulled away, but I was destroying Uthman's girls like Jesus destroyed Muhammad, their dog. But Elias is a bastard, a spiritual bastard, because he has no honor because he doesn't want to defend his prophet who raped women like his mother and treated women like whores like his mother calling it muta. So instead, he's going to bark like a dog. And here's the video, Elias. We buried your jihadis because all you can do is behead people and rape their women. But not on my watch, because as long as I have breath, I will destroy your prophet, that whore. No disrespect to whores. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for insulting these people and comparing them to Muhammad. But your prophet is a bastard and you have no honor because if you had an honor, you wouldn't defend a prophet who raped women and molested them like your mother. Because if your mother was there, and she was an unbeliever, a kafira. He would have raped her and treated her like a horror in the name of Muta. You bastard. To defend such a man, you have no honor, no dignity. Dogs are better than you and your prophet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. We have ultimate fart as well. Do you want to no, get him dude, in? Please. Okay. If you get Take him, him in, I'm going to cuss you out. All right. The guy cuss me out. Don't you have him on record? I have him on record cussing me out, saying that my daughters will rape them. What are you wrong? What's oh. Wrong? I do not know that. Okay. Did you not watch the video that. when I said his wife is a whore and the Shia pissed on her? <laughs> no, he came. I have it recorded. Did you see it? He was barking like a dog, like his prophet, saying that my daughters will be raped and molested. What's wrong with you? Man, dude? this is this is this is the true face of Islam, brother. What else we can see? Like uh, when I received this kind of a threat, just like you did. Uh, this is this shows the true face of Islam. They, they do not respect women. No, they're not men. They're, they're only men behind the screen or and they have knives to behead you. They can't exactly. defend Muhammad. He's a whore. And exactly. this guy was threatening, saying that, you know, my daughters will be molested because he's still upset that the Shia, you know, molested his wife. I don't know. That's, that's how know demonic know it is. Son. He doesn't know which of his sons he fathered and the Shia fathered the night they did muta with his wife. Man, it's crazy. Well, it's crazy. All right, yeah. guys, All right. Jen, you didn't see it? Here, let me get you the link. Hold on, no, 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 no. Uh, I don't want to show that to anybody. No, like not this. show it, but show them the link so they can go listen to his blasphemies. Hold on. You don't need to play it, but it's on my channel. I saved it. I awesome. just want people to see the blasphemy so you can see it. So I'm not lying. So you want to lie? You know, I'm I'm over 40, and I did not know different names of the private part of women until I started doing ministry. When these people abused me, my mother, and my sister, and my daughters with the private parts. And I now know so many names of the private parts just because of these Muslims. Because Muhammad, yeah, because Muhammad, they're about serious. Here it is, guys, show them here. Warning, graphics, X-rated session caused by Muhammad and ultimate truth foul mouth. Here's where you're gonna hear this bastard saying that my daughter should be raped, molested and all that because he's still upset that the Shia molested his wife in the name of Allah and he doesn't know which of the children he sired. So show them that. So I'm not lying. Here it is, so you guys don't think I'm lying. You see the title? Oh, these, guys are, are, these guys are, I'm opening, brother. These guys are just insane. There you go, brother. I'm opening it. So you guys see that's the video. Go listen to how he manifests. Warning graphic x-ray show, yeah, show them name. What's the name of it? Hey, warning. Wow, I'm wearing the same shirt. Now you tell me this is not divine. Coincidence? <laughs> this was like a month ago and I'm wearing this. Guys, tell me this is not divinely appointed. This is not like divine confirmation. I'm wearing the same shirt that I did a month ago. This was about a month ago. There it is. But what's the name of it? Now you want to remove Sirat Mustaqim. Oh, sorry. Sirat Mustaqim, thank you, brother. Five bucks. Oh, yes. He's, he's a We're good guy. We're glad he gave you five bucks. You're who? Yeah. We got it. He gave you five bucks. Can you remove it okay. so they can see? Remove what's it, brother. It? Watch me on the stream yard, not on the YouTube. Dude. Okay, what's the name of it? Warning. Graphic. X rated session caused by Muhammadan ultimate farts, foul mouth. You should see what he says about my daughters and my wife, which he thinks she's not my wife. She's my ex-wife. So he can have at her. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I'm just kidding. May God grant her repentance. But then he talks about my daughters, 11 and 9, and what he's going to do to them. Yeah. I don't remember time stamp because I don't listen to it. So this is why I don't have respect for these guys. And if you think that being kind to them is going to get you far, 
you are stupid and you're deceived. It's Christians like you that get Christians murdered. Right? Anyway, let's come back to the issue of Hebrews. Let's not yeah. forget the point. The Brother Rob point. Christian, come on, man. Don't be a hater. Okay? No, Rob is much better looking than you. If come. ugly was a sin, you and David Wood would have no you and David Wood would have no hope of salvation. And Anthony, forget about it. You'd have to spend a million years in purgatory. Man, come on. Don't be a hater. Right on, Miles. Let's try it again. Nobody knows the timestamp. You don't like it? Get lost or go listen. <laughs> okay, let's look at the Hebrews. Now, now let's look at the Hebrews let's before we answer. We can give you every detail about them. The most of Osman out there, we still have. Because it's not just... We do not have! There's not a single Muslim with one! <laughs> Man, come on. One he just talks so much. We have those that are carbon dated to that time frame. Is there any carbon dated copy no. of Quran? What he's talking about is a Birmingham manuscript that the carbon dating showed. It was anywhere from before the time of Muhammad and sometime during the lifetime of Muhammad. The problem is, because he's an idiot, carbon dating gives you the dating of when the uh, animal, the animal, well, not even animal, but when that the vellum was produced, meaning codices, they used animal skin. So when they produced that codex to write on, it gives you the approximate range and when the codex was produced, was created. But it doesn't tell you when the writing itself, when the writing found in that animal skin actually occurred, when it was actually written. You see the difference? But exactly. because he's stupid, the, the time range, if we go with his logic, the Birmingham manuscript, if we go to his logic and go with the earliest dating, then the surahs that are found in the Birmingham manuscript are older than Muhammad. So if we go with the earlier dating, that means if we go with the ink coinciding with the early dating, that what was written coincides when the animal was, you know, the skin of the animal was produced, then these are surahs that do not come from Muhammad, that Muhammad plagiarized and made part of the Quran. You see how stupid he is? Actually, 20 years before Muhammad's birth, so, so 40 now, years later, he was years? a prophet, so it becomes 60 years before his prophet. <laughs> so if we go with the earlier dating of the vellum, the animal skin that was produced, so you could write on, and we then uh, conclude that the surahs were written around the same time that the vellum was produced, then that means these surahs predate Muhammad, and that means they're not from Allah, and Muhammad stole them and made them part of the Quran. You see what an idiot this guy is? And by the way, they are only four pages, if I'm not mistaken. Four or six, something like that. I don't want to be obnoxious, uh, wrong, but it's either four or six, not more than that. And uh, and they don't even match the current Quran, FYI. Anyhow, but you get it, right? You understand? Yes. This is what he's referring to. But again, how do you respect someone who's deceiving Muslims? If I'm a Muslim, and I'm hearing this and I find out that he's lying. I would be so upset and discussing if this fat slob, the spiritual or is lying to me, then only God knows what he's doing to unbelievers because I'm a fellow Muslim. He's supposed to fear Allah and respect me and tell me the truth. If he has no integrity, but to lie to me by giving me all these false facts and misinformation that the Kufar are destroying and embarrassing me, then only God knows what he's telling to unbelievers if he's going to lie to fellow believers. You are yes. right, brother. You are right. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. He's saying so many things between the two things which are about Hebrews. But yeah, I want to get to Hebrews so we can refute it, but let's yeah. make it look right. finish. We have the Lis Asani. Who, who wrote it? Okay, now. It definitely wasn't Jesus, Isa mm -hmm. Isa ibn Maryam didn't write it. It wasn't a disciple or an apostle or any of that stuff. I'm not sure. It could be. This is the name. This is kind of funny. It could be possibly Paul, Barnabas, Silas, Ap Apios, Apollos, Luke, Philip, Priscilla, uh, Aquila, uh, the Clement of Rome. These have been suggested, but in reality, there could be more like the Apostle and others. We have no evidence to ascribe it to anybody in particular all right now that's the end of hebrews brother please yeah make it let's, let's do with it the guy can't even read what is in front of him and i'm wondering how does he read the arabic because he's mispronouncing words like the book of palm you remember the palm trees the book of palm? <laughs> yeah i know that, that now, let's, come back, let's come back to the issue what john macarthur is noting 
It's simply a fact that there were some Christians who thought, for example, Barnabas may have written it, or Apollos, or maybe it was Priscilla Aquila. But he doesn't tell you that many, if not most of the Christians, especially in the eastern part of the church, believe Paul wrote it using an amanuensis, meaning a scribe. Why did they think Paul wrote it? Because number one, if you study the theology of Hebrews, it very closely resembles the teaching of Paul in his letters. Number two, go to Hebrews 13, 23 to see who is mentioned at the conclusion of the epistle. Hebrews 13, 23. So then I'm going to show you how it backfires against them. Let me remove the second part. Hebrews 13, 23. Here we come. Hebrews 13, 23. Yes, brother. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Okay, no, notice here who he mentioned? Timothy. Timothy is one of Paul's traveling companions. And Timothy is the one that Paul wrote his last two letters right before he was beheaded. So here, whoever wrote it clearly is from the Pauline group, meaning... If it's not Paul, it's a follower of Paul because Timothy was a traveling companion of Paul. So there is evidence to show it's Pauline, Pauline. But I am convinced and persuaded that Paul actually had someone write it for him. And there is very strong internal evidence that the one who wrote this for Paul, because we know it comes from the Pauline group because Timothy's mentioned. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. The one who wrote it for Paul most likely is Luke. Do you know why Luke? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Because the Greek of Hebrews is high class, polished Greek, sophisticated Greek that is very identical to the Greek of Luke and Acts. Scholars of the Greek New Testament will tell you that Luke and Acts was written by someone who is highly educated, proficient in Greek because his Greek is very polished and is of the highest quality. So is the Greek of Hebrews. Luke and Acts and Hebrews, the Greek of those books are highly polished, quite, quite polished, very, very <clears throat> articulate, showing that whoever wrote these books was very educated and knew Greek very well. He was an educated Greek speaker and Greek writer. And because the Greek of Hebrews is similar to Luke and Acts, many have been persuaded into thinking Luke wrote Hebrews on behalf of Paul. So the evidence is very early and widespread that it's actually a letter of Paul, but Paul didn't have to write it to be his because Paul uses scribes, amanuensis, and the Greek, the Polish Greek of Hebrews is similar to, if not identical to the Polish Greek of Luke and Acts, which makes it most likely that Luke is the one who's writing Hebrews for Paul. Now, I'll give you further proof that Luke is our most likely candidate for writing Hebrews because notice who does he mention? Timothy, right? Timothy, yes, brother. Now go to first Timothy, chapter, I'm sorry, go to second Timothy, chapter one, verses one and two. Chapter one, let's go. Verses one and two. One, one and two. Let's read that. <laughs> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in christ jesus to timothy a beloved son grace mercy and peace from god the father and christ jesus our lord so he's writing to timothy right yes brother now go to second timothy 4 11 who is with paul in prison as he's writing to timothy wow so internal evidence shows everything awesome second timothy 4 verse 11 4 11 only luke is with me Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Hallelujah. So Luke is with him? Yes. And so Luke knows Timothy? Yes. And Timothy knows Mark and Luke? Yes. And Luke and Mark both know Paul and travel with Paul? He, absolutely. So now since Hebrews is written, where Timothy is also in prison about to be released, then you can make a very strong case that this was written by Paul using a scribe, most likely Luke, because here 
when Paul is again in prison, because he's in prison more than once, and here during this time of 2 Timothy, notice Timothy's not in prison, Paul is, and Paul's about to be killed. This is the last letter he wrote before he was beheaded. So then you can make a strong argument that just like here in the last letter that Paul wrote, Luke was present with him. And if Luke is present with him, of course he's gonna use Luke as one of his scribes. And Luke knows Timothy, and Paul is writing this to Timothy. You, make, you can make a strong case that in Hebrews, during another of one of Paul's imprisonments, there again, Luke would be present with Paul, and he would have Luke writing this letter to the Hebrews, this time not to Timothy, but to these Jews who are about to apostatize. Are you with me there? Yes. Now, does Paul use scribes known as amanuensis? Yes, because go to Romans 16, 22, and see it was a common fact that authors would have scribes writing letters for them with their approval. Because in Romans 16, 22, a letter no one denies is Pauline, meaning from Paul, Paul is sending his letter to the Christians at Rome. But did Paul write it? Let's see. I, Tyrannus, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. So why is Tertius writing this letter of Paul when it's Paul's letter to the Christians at Rome? Because Paul is using him as his guide. So then you have a good case that Hebrews, because it's Polish Greek, and the Greek of Hebrews is similar, if not identical, to Luke and Acts, Luke is writing Hebrews for Paul. Awesome. And the reference to Timothy shows clearly comes from the Pauline, Pauline circle. And even if you say it's Barnabas, that doesn't refute it's Paul, because who is Paul's traveling companion? Barnabas. Luke, Luke and Barnabas. Right? In the book of Acts, who's traveling with Paul? Barnabas. And so even if it's Barnabas, that would simply mean Barnabas is writing it as Paul's scribe. And if Absolutely. you want to say it's Apollos, that still doesn't mean it's not Pauline or Paul. Why? Because Apollos would be writing it on behalf of Paul because Paul and Apollos knew each other and Apollos knew Luke. So even if you say it's Apollos, that would only mean that Paul used Apollos to write it for him. If you say it's Barnabas, that would only mean that Paul used Barnabas to write it for him. If you say Luke, that only means that Paul is using Luke to write it for him, because clearly this letter comes from the Pauline group. How do we know it's from the Pauline group? Because Timothy is mentioned, someone that traveled with Paul till the very end. Wow, well, I'm amazed why these MacArthur actually described that as well. I'm amazed that these evangelic people, when they write these kind of things, why don't yeah. they ascribe no, these things think, as well? To be honest with you, I don't think he quoted MacArthur in context because at first he said, no one knows who wrote it. But then he goes and mentions MacArthur referring to some possible scribes. Mm -hmm. So notice he first said, no one knows who wrote it. But then he says, was it Paul? Uh, was it Apollos or Mark? That means he didn't quote MacArthur in context. He took one part, then made a big deal out of it. And then he read the other parts where MacArthur goes on to say that some <clears throat> names have been <clears throat> attributed in writing Hebrews. So, uh, so he's I swear, skipping certain lines. Yes, I would suspect that if you actually read MacArthur, because I don't have MacArthur in front of me, mm -hmm. but if you read MacArthur, I wouldn't be shocked that after saying that there is dispute regarding who wrote this, and we're not certain who wrote it, that he would go on to give evidence whom he think wrote it, whom he thinks wrote it. Perfect. But we don't I'll know, because I don't have yeah. Hebrews. I I'll don't, go to we can do that. Story. We can try to yeah. find the book of Hebrews, John MacArthur, and I wouldn't be shocked if this slob quoted him out of context like he does everything. Because I will definitely I would find suspect, a book. Yeah. I would suspect that MacArthur would have gone on to say that here are some possible candidates who potentially may have written Hebrews. And here's the view that I opt for, the view that I embrace. But again, he's a Mohammedan, we can't trust him. But put that aside. Even if it's anonymous, even if it's anonymous, that actually tells you, tells you the integrity of the church. Let me explain why. And I hope you guys are listening because we're going into a lot of meat. And I'm trusting the Spirit to save us from error and give us the power to call facts clearly and speak clearly for the glory of Jesus, even though the demons have been manifesting. Okay. Even if we don't know who wrote it, 
That's actually a testimony to the integrity of the church. Why? Why is it a sign of the integrity of the church? Hebrews was actually debated whether it should be included in the canon or not. Now, why? Because they weren't certain who wrote it. Now, you know why? That shows you how honest these men of God were. Because the book of Hebrews is one of the most powerful books in defense of the Trinity, in defense of Jesus being the God-man, in defense of Jesus' vicarious death for our sins and his priestly work and priestly intercession in heaven. Why would any Christian not want this book in the canon when it's thoroughly orthodox and it affirms the Trinity, the divine personhood of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh, the Son of the Father, who's equal to the Father in essence, who became man, who died for our sins, to atone for our sins, who's a high priest who intercedes for us, and will return physically, bodily, to judge the living and dead, all of which completely agrees with the theology of the church. Why then would they question it? Because to them, it didn't matter if a book was solid theologically. To them, it was important that the book came from the apostolic period because the church realized that it was only during the time of the apostles that the spirit inspired men to write books that were scripture. So they had to know for certain, did this come from the apostolic period where the apostles were there and their companions with them, where they're receiving revelation from the spirit to now write down books that are scripture. Because you can have a book written after that period that is sound theologically, but it doesn't mean it's inspired by the spirit. That shows you their integrity. Amen. Amen. You get my point? So they didn't question its canonicity, whether it should be in the canon or not, because it contradicted their theology. Hebrews is one of the most powerful witnesses to the Trinity. The Holy Spirit being Jehovah, a divine person. Jesus being Jehovah in the flesh, the Son of the Father, this thing from the Spirit, and that Jesus is the God-man. And as man, he's our high priest to offer his life as a sacrifice, who now intercedes for us, who return physically, bodily, to judge the living dead. You don't get more orthodox than that. So then why would they question it? Because it doesn't matter how sound a book is theologically. Because many Christians came and wrote books that were sound theologically. But they were not inspired. Because one of the criteria, one of the criteria for a book, to be accepted as revelation from the spirit and part of the collection of books that the churches had to read and submit to is that a book had to be written during the apostolic period. Why during the apostolic period? Because that was the only time the spirit was giving revelation that all churches had to submit to. And that was the only time that the spirit was inspiring them to write books containing that revelation that all churches had to submit to. After this apostolic period, there was no more revelation in that sense. So if you couldn't prove that Hebrews came from the period of the apostles and their companions, during the period where the Holy Spirit was inspiring people to write books that all churches had to submit to, then you could read it and be edified by it, but you could not make it part of those list of books that all Christians had to submit to. So that told you they were men of integrity. Because it was simply, whether a book or read with them theologically, then all the more reason not to question Hebrews. But now, beyond that, was Hebrews read by the Christians at the time of Muhammad? Absolutely. Did any Christian at the time of Muhammad question Hebrews? Not a single Christian at the time of Muhammad questioned Hebrews. So then why is this slob, this Mohammedan stone-licking pagan slob, calling it to question the book of Hebrews when his prophet confirmed all the books that the Jews and Christians read at his time. And one of those books that they included and accepted without dispute was Hebrews. Why did Muhammad make the same argument that this slob is making? Say, well, hold on. You don't know who wrote Hebrews. Therefore, I reject it. Why did he confirm all that they had with them? Now, open up the Quran for us, brother, because I'm going to have to read awesome. some verses. Awesome, brother. Let's go to Quran browser. Now, was that his main argument? Oh, yes. There is a, there's a couple of other arguments where scribal errors in the Bible he quoted. 
uh, which is which is scribal errors, and we we all know that the number numerical yeah, scribal that. errors. Sorry, we already took care of that with all the variants and contradictions. And we are ready to care of that exactly. Right. So, right now, if you open up, just open up chapter two and choose one version. Uh, the whole chapter two. Yeah, no, just yeah, you can open up all of it, but I want you to read now for me. Go to chapter two. Just you can open all of it and just all scroll down to verse eighty nine. Uh, your browser is not working. Sorry. Okay, now find another browser. You don't have to use mine. Center. To. Okay, let me just do do some this. Maybe it will open now. Arbery Palmer, and let's see if it works. And by the way, as he's opening it, for the rest of you Catholics at the Council of Trent, you'll find that Hebrews is ascribed to Paul, and in the King James version. When it was originally produced, you'll find that when you go to chapter one, it says the epistle to the Hebrews according to Saint Paul. So even the King James translators believe Paul wrote this, perhaps using a scribe. And even in the Council of Trent, Hebrews is a scribe as one of the fourteen letters that Paul wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, whether directly or through the use of a scribe. And ironically, the official position of the Jehovah's Witness Bible, which this slob was citing. The Jehovah's Witnesses, in their official teaching, ascribe Hebrews to Paul. Even the Jehovah's Witnesses say Paul wrote Hebrews. Absolutely, brother. So you have to change the Quran browser. Okay, go okay. to chapter two, verse eighty-nine. Read it for us. Eight and nine. All right, let's go to eight eighty-nine. And nine. Chapter two, verse eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Okay, eighty-nine. All right. So, which translation you want? Pick any. I don't care. Any one, brother. Doesn't matter. Anyway. All right, let's read Sahih International. And when there came to them a book, i.e., Quran, <laughs> from Allah, confirming that which was written with them. Okay, wait. Although, with the Jews and Christians, right? Yes, sir. At the time, of Muhammad, he was told to say, "My Quran confirms what is with you." But yes. didn't they have Hebrew, Hebrews? Was Hebrews with them? Uh, supposedly, they should have Hebrews, obviously. So Without why is he confirming? What they have, when one of the things they have is the Book of Hebrews, which according to him is anonymous and therefore should be rejected. So he's better than Muhammad, more knowledgeable than Muhammad, knows more than his prophet and his God. Supposedly. <laughs> so finish that verse eighty-nine, confirming which was with them, although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved. But when there came to them that which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be upon the disbelievers. Now read verse ninety-one, chapter two, verse ninety-one. Ninety-one, brother. Here we go. Let me just reduce the translations and let's just do one. Okay. And when it is said to them, "Believe in what Allah has revealed," they say, "We believe in what was revealed to us." And they disbelieved in what came after it, while it is the truth confirming, confirming that which is with. Them. Wow. Wait, wait. What is the confirm? Which is with them. So they already have the Torah and the Injil with them. Yeah, but well, you know, that's what you did. You fell for his trap. I'll give you okay, more bucks. It says Torah and Injil. It doesn't say Torah and Injil. Sorry, my bad. It says the Bible. Whatever they have, right? Yes. Okay, so whatever they have, correct? Correct. Okay, so at the time of Muhammad, did they have Hebrews? Uh, yep. So Muhammad is told, your Quran confirms whatever they have with them, even the Book of Hebrews, which this slob says is anonymous and should be rejected. So that means he's better and smarter than Muhammad and his God. <laughs> and, and I love the Arabic. But who will hakku musaddikalima ma'ahum with them at this? It's, it's present tense, brother. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So finish the verse because I got a few more to show you. Say, then we did. You, why did you kill the prophets of Allah? Before, if you are believers. Okay, now read ninety-seven, chapter two, verse ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Mm -hmm. Say, whoever is an enemy of Jibrail to Jibrail, it is none but he who has brought it, i.e., the Quran, <laughs> down upon your hearts, O Muhammad, by permission of Allah, confirming, confirming that which was before it. And before as guidance, read the Arabic. Before it, what does it say? Lima bayna yadayhi, between your hands, bayna okay, so literally, the literal Arabic. See, before it means in front of it. 
Now he's going to repeat the Arabic. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadehi. Yep. Confirming that which is between his hands. That's the literal Arabic. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadehi. The Quran of Muhammad confirmed was between Muhammad's hands. That is an Arabic idiom meaning whatever that was there in circulation that he had access to. The only books that he had access to, which was with the Jews and Christians, are all the books, including Hebrews, which he says should be rejected because it's anonymous. Meaning he's smarter than Allah and better than Muhammad. Wow. I am loving right? this. Brother. Right, finish it. Yep. Uh, confirming that which was before it, which is a wrong translation, as a guidance and good tidings for the believers. Now read 101, chapter 2, verse 101. I think chapter 2 is more than sufficient to destroy them. Okay. Yeah, the only chapter 2, I'll give, I'll give you a few more, but chapter 2 just by itself. Read 101. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them, musaddiqal lima ma'ahum, with them, a party of those who had been given the scripture through the scripture of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. Okay, now, for the Christians, if you're paying attention, notice the demons manifested because we're destroying Muhammad, bearing Allah of the Quran, and exposing this fat slob. He's a coward. If you learn these arguments, you see that Uthman is contradicting Muhammad. And we don't care what Muhammad says. Muhammad is the son of the devil burning in hell. But why am I quoting Muhammad? He believes in Muhammad. Meaning if he believes in Muhammad, he has to believe what Muhammad believed about the Bible. But this slob, because his father is the devil, the same one who molested Muhammad spiritually, Satan molested Muhammad spiritually, not only goes against the truth and the facts and the manuscript evidence proving the Bible's preserved, but he goes against his own prophet because his prophet is told to tell the Jews and Christians at this time, my Quran and I confirm all you have that's with you. Well, one of the books they had was Hebrews. Why did Muhammad say, I reject Hebrews because it's anonymous? Because he's a slob who's a liar, a son of the devil, which is why he won't debate but try to talk over you. Now, that was chapter 2, verse 101. Go to chapter 5, verse 66 of the Quran. Excuse me? Sorry, I was sneezing. Chapter 5? Verse 66. 566. All right, there we go. And if only they had upheld the Torah, the gospel, and what has been revealed to them from their Lord. Okay, hold on. It's saying all that God revealed to them, so he removed revealed more than the Torah and the gospel. And whatever has revealed him to them. And now when we read this verse in light of the others, everything they had, Muhammad confirms as being revelation given to them from Allah. And their sin is they didn't follow it. Absolutely. But wait, one of the things that they had, which Muhammad confirms that's with them, is Hebrews. That means according to this verse, Hebrews is one of those books sent down that they're supposed to follow. Absolutely. Finish it. They would have consumed from above them and from beneath their feet, among them are moderate community, but many of them, evil is that which they do. Okay, now read 68, chapter 5, verse 68. 68. Awesome. Say, O people of the scripture, you are standing on nothing until you uphold the Torah, the gospel, and what has been revealed to you from your Lord? It doesn't say Quran. This is why this translation is a lie from hell. It doesn't yes. say, i.e. the Quran. That's not in the Arabic. Exactly. It says, unzila ilaykum min rabbikum. Whatever has been revealed to you from your Lord. Full stop. Yep. And then, so if you did follow that, which Allah revealed to you, what would happen? And which has been revealed to you from your Lord will surely increase many of them in transgressions and disbelief so do not grieve over the disbelieving people in other words you are a loser and you're nothing if you don't follow the torah and the gospel and all that was revealed to you now when you take these verses and don't follow these shameless butchering now notice the muslims they have no honor they add words even to their quran they even pervert their quran and these wicked sons of the devil accuse us of perverting the bible if you take 566 and 568 if you take that where it says, you Jews and Christians are nothing 
unless and until you act upon the Torah and the gospel and all that was revealed to you, unless you do and act and obey the Torah and the gospel and all that was revealed to you, otherwise you're nothing. But if you act upon all that was revealed to you, then you'll be successful and be given provisions. And then you take that with those other verses where Muhammad says, the Quran and I confirm what is with you, you Jews and Christians, what you have right now, everything, I confirm all of it. Well, one of the things they had was Hebrews, which means according to these verses, Hebrews was sent down from Allah, and they're expect, expected to follow it. Absolutely, without doubt, brother. Okay, now let's bury him by turning the argument against him. Are you ready? Now see yes. if my browser works. See if my browser works. Just give me a second, I gotta say hi to the John, because now we're gonna finish him off. Finish him! Let's see, see if your browser works. Two colon one to any eight, let's see. Submit. It works now. See, Sam's browser is naive. It works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes. So now it's working. So before you know, Sam drinks a lot of uh, Coca Cola. Uh, he will he'll dash me on saying Coca Cola <coughs> because he doesn't drink Coca Cola. But I'm gonna use the word Coca Cola. So while he comes back, thank you, TD, for your super chat. Free download books on women and sex. Jihad with hundreds of di uh, direct translations of Arabic reference. Search Islamic books from Arnab Muvashir. Thank you, Didi. Thank you so very much. But by the way, uh, our brother Usama Dugdog has a few books on Jihad and women in Islam. So you should buy Usama Dugdog's uh, books. Uh, they are in the straightway uh, ministry.org as, as well. And he has given all the Arabic references in English translation. All right, my brother, question yes. to you. Is it working or no? Yes, sir, it's working. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. My first challenge, my first challenge to Uthman, guys, remember these challenges. We're doing it for you. I didn't do this for me. I don't need to respond to the slob. He's a joke. I'm doing it for you so you can learn your faith, how to refute these blasphemous swine and prove the Bible's God's word. And do it without fear because your life is in the hands of Jesus. Now, with that said, my challenge to Uthman and his clowns who are blindly following him. May the Lord save them from him and Muhammad and Allah. Show me a single verse. Show me a single verse in the Quran. Listen to my challenge, guys. Show me a single verse in the Quran where it says the Quran is the word of Allah. Explicitly, the Quran is the word of Allah. That's my first challenge. The Quran is the word of Allah. Second challenge, show me a single verse in the Quran that tells you what the Quran is and how many chapters and verses make up the Quran. My second challenge. Show me where the Quran says, this is the Quran, and it's made up of so many surahs and verses. That's my second challenge. These two challenges, no one can answer you, because even Adam may be shocked to hear, because I know he's going to quote verses that he thinks meets the challenge. There's not a single verse where the Quran is said to be the word of Allah. That is correct, brother. Okay. They will quote verses, it says, and let them hear the word of Allah. Well, what is that word? That's the Torah. No, it isn't. Prove me wrong. Nowhere in the Quran does it say it's the word of Allah. In fact, as Thomas Matthew said, 6940, it says that this is the word of a noble messenger. But now, my first challenge, Slav, show me where the Quran says it's the word of Allah. The Quran is the word of Allah. And my second challenge, Slav, is show me where the Quran says how many chapters make up the Quran. What are the names of those chapters and how many verses? Prove it from the Quran, you Slav. Now I'm going to show you chapters in the Quran that do not claim to be revelation. They're just chapters, someone ranting, a madman, a lunatic, just, just uttering nonsense. But it, those chapters do not say it's Allah's word. Do me a favor, choose one translation and read chapter 110. Uh, one, Arbri? Yeah, whatever you want, it's up to you, man. 110? Yeah. Okay. What is that, CX help? In the name of okay, man, just read the Quran, man. Okay. When comes the help of God and victory, and though sets men entering God's religion in throngs, then proclaim the praise of thy Lord and seek his forgiveness, for he turns again unto men. Okay. <laughs> Here's my question for you. Where does that chapter say Allah speaking and these are revelations from Allah? Nowhere. So how do you know this is Quran, this is Revelation? Where does it say this is Quran and this is Revelation from Allah that Allah is speaking? 
No what does it say there? Okay, now go to chapter 111, 111. All right, let's go back. 111. Perish the hands of Abu Lahab and perish he. His wealth avails him not, neither what he has earned. He shall roast at a flaming fire, and his wife, the carrier of the firewood, upon her neck a rope of palm fiber. <laughs> okay, that question for you. Where does that surah say, these are the words of Allah, Allah is speaking and cursing this man and his wife, and we don't know why. And where does it say it's revelation from Allah, and that's Quran? Where does this chapter say, this is Quran, this is revelation from Allah, and it's Allah speaking these words? Let me make it easy. Other than three locations in Quran, other than three locations in Quran, where Musa is talking to Allah from the burning bush, Allah is never a first person in Quran. Okay, now, never. Does this chapter say, this is Quran, this is the words of Allah, Allah speaking? Nope. It's just a okay. human being or anybody writing. Okay, so about chapter Allah. 108. Read chapter 108 for me. 108. Oh man, that was my favorite chapter once in a life to span. Surely we have given thee abundance. So pray unto thy Lord and sacrifice. Surely he that hates thee, he is the one cuts off. Now prove to me the one who's speaking, we have given thee abundance is Allah. And prove to me where this surah says it is Quran, it's revelation. Because if you read it, whoever the we are, it's not Allah because they mention Allah. We have given you abundance and pray unto thy Lord and sacrifice. So that actually proves it's not Allah speaking. It's a group of people saying to someone, hey, we gave you abundance. We gave you money. So now be thankful for the money we gave you. Now thank Allah. Yeah. And the Muslims read it a lot for. Okay. But where does it say it's Allah speaking? Nowhere. It's Quran. It's revelation. And nowhere. It is somebody speaking that they put in Quran. Okay, now read chapter 107. There's a few more so that people get the point. Remember these surahs because these are the ones that are going to bury Muhammad. 107, brother? Yeah, chapter 107. Hast thou seen him who cries lies to the tomb? Man, that's a bad English for me. That is he who repulses the orphan and urges not to feeding of the needy. So woe to those that pray and are heedless of their prayers to those who make display and refuse charity. Okay, show me where this chapter says, this is Quran, this is revelation sent down from Allah and it's Allah speaking. This is Uthman speaking, let me just say that. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't say that, right? Nope. Chapter 106. 106. They're almost done. I just want to see. Guys, remember all these chapters. Challenge them to prove these chapters are Quran and it's Allah speaking and they're part of the Quran. How do you know? Prove it. Where does the Quran say how many chapters Allah sent down and how many verses? For the, for the composition of Quraysh, I think that's Quraysh, Q-U-R-A-S-H, yeah, right? Quraysh. Same word, Quraysh. They're composing for the winter and summer carnival, uh, caravans. So let them serve the Lord of this house. So that actually and proves that the person who's speaking is not Allah because he's telling people to serve the Lord of the house. He doesn't say serve me, the Lord of the house. Exactly. Allah is again third person. Who so you again has... assume that's Allah speaking. No, I said Allah is third person. So yeah, somebody no, is writing. Not Allah third person. Allah third person means that Allah is speaking of self third person, you little ah, sinner. Ah, okay, sorry. Be careful you said it. I'm going to have to headbutt uh, uh, CP. But go ahead, finish it. <laughs> Who has fed them against hunger and secured them from fear? Okay, now read Surah 105. 105? Oh, that's a good verse. Is it? I Surah used... 105? 105 yeah. is good? Yeah, I used to like it. Used to. Because that's the power of Almighty Allah, supposedly. <laughs> Surah 105. Hast thou not seen how thy Lord did with the men of elephant? So this proves that the one speaking is not Allah because he mentions thy Lord. What your yep. Lord did to the men and the elephant. And who are the men? What elephant? Is it talking about my brother, the elephant? Uh, no, you have to go to the seat for that. How do you know? Go ahead, keep reading. Yep. Did he not make their coil to go astray? Guy, I mean, go astray, yeah. 
and he loosed upon them birds in flights hurling against them stones of baked clay and he made them like green what blades the green blades of jar what the hell is this about what man what elephant what burns what flight who's speaking and who cares okay of course where does the surah say guys that this is allah speaking and this is quran it's revelation it doesn't so what's my challenge to understand why i'm giving you these surahs nowhere does the quran say it is the word of allah the quran's word of allah it doesn't say that and nowhere does the quran tell you how many surahs make up the quran and how many verses that means the muslims have been blindly reciting chapters that they've been deceived into thinking is revelation but these chapters nowhere say they're revelation nowhere say they were sent down nowhere say it's allah speaking so keep track of this because we're now going to bury him and decimate him and spread his a- ashes like crap over the kaaba okay we got more brother you ready yes sir sura 104 you're going in reverse order just like yes, woe unto every backbiter slender <laughs> slender who has gathered riches and counted them over thinking uh, his riches have made him immortal no need he shall be thrusted into the crusher and what shall teach is die what is crusher the fire of god kindle roaring over the hearts covered down upon them in columns outstretched okay go to 103 we're going to try to make it a little faster chapter 103 yeah 103 be by the afternoon surely man is in the way of loss save those who believe and do righteous deeds and counsel each other unto the truth and counsel each other to be steadfast by the way it's not always after afternoon it's well asr anyhow whatever okay okay now did you catch it does this say yep. this is allah speaking it's quran it's revelation part of the quran nope okay, what about surah 102 102 we're almost done guys don't be bored we'll put you to sleep i know we're almost done but we need to go through this gross rivalry diverse you even till you visit the tombs no need no indeed but soon you shall know again no indeed but soon you shall know no indeed did you know with the knowledge of certainty you shall surely see hell again you shall surely see hell see it with the eye of certainty then you shall be questioned that day concerning true bliss and that's a crazy thing this is supposedly miraculous it's about to make me puke and throw up and go to sleep <laughs> Three <laughs> chapter one hundred one, chapter one hundred one. We're almost done. There's a few more. And this last chapter was good. Okay, the clatterer. What is the clatterer? And yeah, what that's shall... what I want. What the hell is the clatterer? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Arabic, brother. You can't comprehend that. And what shall teach thee? What is clatterer? The day that that men shall be like scattered mouths, and the mountain shall be like plucked wool tufts. Then he. and he whose deeds weigh heavy in the balance uh, shall inherit a pleasing life but he whose deeds weigh light in the balance shall plunge in the womb of the pit and what good yeah are you snoring are you snoring yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's doing my stuff keep going and what shall teach thee what is the pit a blazing fire brother okay guys again i want you to prove to me muslim this is quran Revelations from Allah, Allah speaking. Where does the chapter say that? Now, chapter one hundred. This 100. one is funny. This one's really funny. By the snorting charges, by the sticker of fire, by the dawn raiders blazing a trail of dust, cleaving there with a host. Surely man is ungrateful to his Lord, and surely he is witness against that. Surely he is passionate in his love for good things. No, he not. that when that which is in the tomb is overthrown and that which is in the breast is brought out surely on that day their lord shall be aware of that now do you guys catch it nowhere does this surah say allah speaking nowhere does the surah say this is revelation from your lord nor does it say it's quran it's some madman talking about whatever snorters and whatever cocaine addicts i don't know okay <laughs> and yet you let muslims get away You let Muslims get away with murder. You let Muslims uh, get away with murder. Now go to chapter ninety-nine. We're almost done, guys. I know you're getting bored, but we need to do this. We need to do okay. so you can learn. Awesome. Chapter ninety-nine. Hey, brother uh, Rob Christian, Andrew Martin is a good brother, but 
FYI. Yeah, he's, he's solid, man. I like yeah, you. Yeah, Rob, you did you did not see what he was saying. So, yes, brother uh, Sam. Ninety-nine. I said, you little loser. Ninety-nine. Sorry, I was talking to Rob because uh, that was uh, wrong time out. Okay. When the earth is shaken with a mighty shaking, and the earth brings forth her burden, and man says, "What Eliza? I have no idea what that means." Upon that day, she shall tell her tidings, for that her Lord has inspired her. Upon that day, men shall issue in scattering to see their works, and whose, whose, whose so, whose so, whose so has done. And Adam's weight of good shall see it, and whoso has done an Adam's weight of evil shall see it. There should be a space over here, but anyhow. Hey guys, you saw that, right? Let me see. I think there's one final one. Sorry about that. Okay. What's the point of torturing you and boring you, hearing all this garbage? Read chapter 98, the final one. I'm gonna repeat it. If you guys, before you read, if you don't understand our argument, and you don't follow the way we're arguing, you're going to lose the point. You won't be able to destroy their blasphemies and lies. Make sure you understand what you saw and heard and what you read from our sources. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand perfectly because I promise you guys, I'm not lying. If you understand the arguments that we shared with you by the grace of God's Spirit and you absorb them, you'll be irrefutable. They will run from you. They will not debate you. They'll even threaten to kill you because these arguments cannot be refuted because you have the truth. The Bible is the truth. The God of the Bible is the truth. Jesus is Lord. And he's made it so easy to destroy Muhammad, his fake God and Quran, because it's stupid, wicked, immoral. It's garbage. But you got to learn how to argue. Learn what we just showed you. Now, final one, and then I'm going to repeat the point. Awesome. The unbelievers of the people of the book and the idolaters would never leave off till the clear sign came to them. A messenger from God reciting passages purified. They're in true book, and they scattered not those that were given the book, excepting, excepting after the clear sign came to them. They were commanded only to serve God, making the religion his sincerely men of pure faith, and to perform the prayers and pay the alms that is the religion of the truth. The unbelievers of the people of the book and the idolaters shall be in the fire of Jahannam, therein dwelling forever. Those are the worst of the creatures. But those who believe and do righteous deeds, those are the best of the creatures. Their recompense is with their Lord, gardens of Eden, underneath which river flow therein dwelling forever and ever. God is well pleased with them, and they are well pleased with him. That is for him who fears his Lord. Man, that All throughout awesome. this chapter, the person speaking of Allah and his Lord as someone other than him. He's referring to Allah referring to Allah and the Lord as someone other than him. So what's my challenge? Muslims prove to me all these chapters, these surahs are revelations of Allah sent down from Allah and are part of Quran. Show me where the chapters say, these are revelations of the book. These are chapters of the book. These are Quran and it's Allah speaking. And these are his words. Show me that. Show me also where the Quran says it is the word of Allah explicitly in those words. Show me that. Thirdly, show me where the Quran says, how many chapters make up the Quran and how many verses make up the Quran. You just buried the Slav, destroyed his fake Muhammad, son of the devil, and showed that all the Quran is Satan, who's under the feet of Jesus. Glory to the trying God. That's it. Amen. Amen. And you had a good crowd. You had about like over 250. 260. Absolutely. Praise and I had... Numbers, numbers increase. May it increase for the glory of Jesus. That's it, man. We're Amen. done. I think we destroyed Amen. this guy. Amen. Amen. Amen.